goodness, is this, is my lens all jacked up again? Let me see if I can wipe the Cheeto grease off the lens before we get started here. Oh man, that's going to look, oh that looks so much better. All right. We're experimenting a little bit. I'm going to go with the vertical today. We, we have to refer to these rules quite frequently, and I'm hoping that if I back off just a little bit and show you like the so, then we'll have a little bit better coverage. I don't know, man. What do you think? Is that awkward? Is that weird to watch? YouTube wants me to do it this way, but I don't think I like it. I'm going to see if I can't adjust that here on the fly. Oh, this is going to be awkward. I'm going to have to make some serious changes here. But that's all right. We we aim to please here in the house of the war games. And just like last time, you know, we experimented a little bit with kicking things off by showing my face. And this time we're kicking things off with the weird and off-putting vertical format. Okay. So let's... What? It, what? It, I, I, I don't know about this, man. This is pretty ugly. Uh, it's got a whole new functionality that I'm wildly unfamiliar with. Uh, the only option I have is to share, so it looks like I'm out of luck. It looks like we're stuck with vertical this time around. That'll come in handy for those of you that, I don't know, I don't know. Dark Mart is in the chat, which is appropriate because he asked if I would name something after him, and I said, hey, I got a new system. But we always like to disguise the names of our systems. We don't go 100% for the, the the people's names more often than not. I mean, okay, so Vegas 762. So I mixed up a couple of letters, and instead of Dart Mart, it's, it's Tard Mart. That's the new system in which Chad Solo, as the intern on the CMS Money Changer, have landed after they had a disastrous misjump. And we're going to get to that. But for those of you who did not take a second to watch the YouTube short, I rolled this planet up almost entirely in the YouTube short. I ran out of time. And what I came up with there is a planet 10,000 miles across with a standard atmosphere, 40% seas and oceans, a little bit light, 50 billion residents. Now, let's look at the odds for that. In order to get a planet with 50 billion residents on it, you have to roll wild. It's not easy at all. Remember that your population is going to be 2d6. Uh, where is it? Oh, that's 2d6 minus 2. You have to roll snake eyes to get the 10,000 mile diameter. All right, now that helps you get to the population that we're looking for. Because by the time you come over here, oh, wait a minute. No, population doesn't depend on anything. Population is just 2d6 minus 2. You've got to roll snake uh, boxcars to get to the tens of billions. And then to get to 50 billion, you have to roll. Look, I, normally when I'm rolling populations, I get ones. This time, I came up with, that's like rolling a 17 on 3d6. Huge population here. Then, to make life even more fun, when you roll for the government type, you subtract the, it's 2d6 minus 7 plus the population. Minus 7 plus 3 means if you roll on a pop, on a world with tens of billions, if you roll, look at that, I did it again, boxcars. That gives you the religious dictatorship. And how funny is it that just two episodes ago, we came up with the religious, the expansionist religious sect, faction, if you will, the Dagonians. So now we have, now it's a little off. You know, it's not perfect. None of these things ever are. We've only got 40% seas and oceans. So I wanted to talk a little bit about what this means. I ran the numbers on that. And lo and behold, wouldn't you know it, when you have a planet that is 10,000 miles across and you subtract out and, and you figure out the, the total square footage, if you will, the square mileage, it's about 315 million square miles of real estate. All right, we've got 40% C's, and so that you got to knock that down, and then about 10% for the top and bottom, so you got to multiply that by 0.6. You're only looking at about 180 million livable square miles. It gives you a population density of about 300 per square mile. This is not a hive world. You don't need to have a hive world. It has the same average population density as your typical 
kind of Eastern European country. 300 per square mile is not that much. In fact, and I got my computer over here. Let, let me just bring up, and, and this is a hard statistic, probably taken from the CIA fact book, so take that with a grain of salt. But let's look up population density. Population density. I'm not going to play with the camera. Just, just, just hang on. I know there's no visuals here. Uh, list of countries by population density. And so we got to go, I'm, well, I, I should go to Info Galactic because it's so much better, but I, I apologize. It's sorted by density already. In order to get to, so your, your typical, I would argue, your typical hive world would have a population density somewhat equivalent to uh, Singapore, which is 21,000 residents per square mile. We're nowhere near that. Our average population density, like I said, at 700 per square mile, in fact, I, you know, I could probably run these numbers real quick. If we had 180, let's see, it's, I said it's 50, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. And I'm going to divide that by, let's just say there's only 100 million square miles. That's going to give us a population density of about 500 per square mile. The United Kingdom is 720. We have more breathing room on average on this planet than Great Britain does, or the United Kingdom. Oh, that's the whole United Kingdom, though. That doesn't include all of the, the member countries, does it? I don't see. Uh, wh what else is in that 500 range? Uh, North Korea, right? So, and we all know North Korea is uh, American Samoa, 570 per square mile. And believe me, there's a lot of real estate in American Samoa. Granted, 90% of it is really tall, really steep, jungle-covered mountains, and the people are all clustered around the, I should, around the, sh the shores. I, I should know. I lived there for seven months. Point being, kind of a nice place. It, it's got a standard atmosphere. Pretty rare. The one thing that I haven't, which, which, one thing I haven't done, I'm working on finishing my sentences, is roll up the law. I'm going to do that right now. I'm going to find out exactly how controlling this religious dictatorship is. But in the meantime, it's the Church of Dagon. We've now found the home planet. We know where Hank Hillsong lives. And with 50 billion people on the planet, it's no wonder that they have expansionist tendencies. I do need to roll for the law level. And the law level modifiers, of course, are... And I need to figure out the tech level. So we're going to do that real quick here. The government type is, is going to be... The law level is going to be 2D... Minus 7 plus the government. So it's 2D plus 3 to find out exactly how controlling these guys are. And with a 10, possession of any weapon. So they have complete and total gun control. And we'll put that here. And, and knife control as well. Law equals to 10. Probably no surprise there. They have a prescription on bladed weapons. All of their clerics don't like it. And maybe it's a little weird that Hank Hillsong is opposed to gun control. I, I'm, I'm suspicious. I suspect that his high priest is Dale Dribble. Dribble, right? It's a and he, yeah, you get it. Okay, so I got uh, I got to write this down. It's a ADA, and then our tech level is gonna be the standard chart down here. Rolling a D six, it's gonna be ooh pretty high. With a starport of C, that takes us to eight. With a size, oh, it doesn't matter. With an atmosphere of six, that doesn't matter. So we're still at eight. Hydrosphere, doesn't matter, we're still at 8. Population, through the roof, we're at, po at tech level 12. And then with a government of A, that doesn't matter either. So we're actually at a tech level of C for these guys. This is the highest tech level we've seen so far. Model 5 computers are good. Tech level 12 gets you almost, oh, it gets you to grab belts and drives of N. How about that? Very high tech level, very strict, very uh, waterlogged. Um, I'm guessing that the 40% of the land that is water is very uh, is is, very, is considered sacred. So that's the first thing we got to do. The second thing I wanted to do, well, there's 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 a couple of second things I want to do. I need to figure out. So now that we've jumped to here, I need I need to map out the rest of these. But do I really, do I need to do that just yet? I don't think I do, because I want to finish the, th the, the little mini adventure of this misjump. As we said last time, looking at the calendar here, our ship 
has misjumped on April 6th. And we're going to we're going to go to the um we we got it. We're 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 dead in the water. We got to refuel. We have just enough fuel to get to um to Tardmart. But wait. There there's a gas giant here. When we misjumped, are we close enough that we can blast into like can we can we swing by without wasting any time? Are we close enough to the gas giant that we can skim this time and save ourselves 18,000 credits? Now that's an interesting question. There's a lot of space in a hex and because we completely blew our our jump, we're lucky to be able to make it there at all. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to roll a d6 to find out how far out of the system we, well, uh, how far away from the main starport we blasted. This is not only going to cost us time and money, it's going to cost us some extra time because I am going to roll, and, and let's, let's make it an average roll. I'm going to roll 2d6 and I'm going to divide by 2. That means it's going to be anywhere from 1 to 6 extra days but most likely closer to three or four extra days to get in, okay? So that's the first thing. But the second die roll I'm going to make is whether or not we are far enough away, close, you know, close enough to that gas giant to scoop fuel on the way. That's going to save us 18,000 credits, all right? Then we can land, and, and so here's the other thing to consider. And, and this is the thought process going through Munderduce's head. He has no one to blame but himself. He is the navigator after all. So I think the first thing to do, let's find out how many extra days of sailing we've got. Remember, we used 180. We had to use some of our fuel to get out beyond 100 planetary distances. Now we have used our 180 to make the jump, and now we have to sail back in. I'm going to argue that I've already checked to see if my drives malfunction. They haven't. So I'm not going to roll again to see if, if this journey destroys the sublight drives. All right, all I need to know right now is how far out are we? And that's going to help determine if we're, the further away we are, the more, well, actually, is that true? The further away we are, the more likely we are to be able to pass the gas giant? Hmm. I don't know about that. I, I think maybe what we'll do is we'll say uh, on, um, if we can roll, how, how, what's the best way to do this? We're going to roll a, the white die and if we can roll the, the same number, let's see. So this is going to give us two to six. Well, let's just figure out how far out we are, okay? So seven divided by four, uh, divided by two, that's going to be three and a half. We'll round up, so extra four days. So we jump to here, boop, and then it takes us one, two, three, four days. And we finally, the money creator, which has the same symbol as mega credits, arrives in Tardmart. Okay, so it's four extra days. How many extra days would it take us to hit the gas giant on the way in? Uh, and so, you know, if you think about the sphere of space, the question is, you know, it, it, the question becomes very, very complicated. Let's draw a little picture to help me. Sometimes when I'm trying to struggle through these things. So we have a little star. And somewhere out here, it doesn't matter where, is, is our huge planet. And it's orbiting in a counterclockwise direction, apparently. I didn't realize that. Because it is an Earth-type planet, it's in the Goldilocks zone. We know that because it's got a standard atmosphere. Gravity is a little higher than Earth. Maybe it's less dense. So that means that the gravity isn't you know, 30% greater. But maybe it's 1.2 or 1.1. It is definitely greater. But somewhere out here is that gas giant. Whoop. Or maybe it's over here. And that's the real question is, are we here or are we here? But the other question, this is a three-body problem. If, if it's here and we land here, well, it, we're, we're not on the way. On the other hand, if it's here and we land here, then it will take us no time. So there's a chance that no additional time is taken to swing by the planet. There's a chance that swinging by the planet could add concern. Like, what if we land here, right? Then, yeah, we could go to the gas planet, 
But then we're going to have to come all the way back. And so that's going to effectively double our, our distance, okay? Fuel totals are generally for J and M drive use. Yeah, but we have to use our, our sublight drives. Here's the thing, Vic Marriott, who points this out. We do still have to concern ourselves with, you know, it, how far away are we? How long do we have to burn? And then if, if we're going to make a pass, we're going to have to slow down. And then if we want to get back to our back to the home planet, we have to burn to accelerate and burn to slow down. And because we are, because of this little problem here, we may not have enough fuel to even get here in a reasonable amount of time. We're only going to have, with 10 tons of fuel, we're going to have 1,000 minutes of burn time. I, I, is that right? It's, for every ton, it's 100 minutes. And if I've got 10 of those, then it's 10 hundred. Yeah, i got got 1,000 minutes of burn time. Now, we can get there and back. That's not the issue. The issue is, do I have enough time under one, well, two Gs of acceleration? My ship can accelerate at two Gs. But if, if I, do I have enough fuel to be able to, to accelerate long enough to make the time of this journey short enough that I don't run out of supplies? Or ultimately, I don't want to add more than a week or two to this. I'm already behind schedule, right? So that's the issue. And really, I think, I think what we'll do is we'll roll, um, I'm going to roll, I'm going to do this trick where I roll and the six is good and the white is bad. And this is how much time, so it's going to be, Roll this and then subtract this from the amount of days it would take to get to here. And if it's, if it's a positive number, that's how many additional days I have. If it's a negative number, then it's just zero additional time. So I get a three and I get a four. So it would take one additional day and I'm going to do it. I'm going to take the extra day where something like this, where... Uh, I got to catch up to this planet, do my drive-by, and then get back over here. That means that it's not going to cost me any money to refuel. And this all might be moot, right? So we're going to arrive on the 18th on uh, Tardmart. But I'm still not done with this, am I? Because I still haven't. I don't, I don't think I rolled four... Does anybody meet us as we come dropping in? Maybe there are some pirates in the vicinity who have been waiting for just such an opportunity. The, the, we have to roll, and because we have a Class C starport, we add two to find out what our encounter is. I get a 13, and that means a subsidized merchant passes. And he says, at some point in these, these four days and a subsidized merchant, then we have to go back to the random encounter table, which we're going to be at minus one. This may be a rival of ours who, doesn't, who wants to feed us bad information. So we hail them and say, yeah, we had a misjump. They're just aren't, we, we lament, and, they, and they're, they're sad with us because there's just not a lot of refined fuel in this corner of the, the galaxy. This subsector, I ran the numbers... You have refinable fuel four times in 10. I have rolled 17 times, and I've hit it, which should lead to six or seven planets on average. I've rolled four. Now, there are five, but that's because I didn't roll for one of them. I just arbitrarily declared it. I'm way overdue. So if we decide to build some systems here, or at least find out where they are and what the starports are like, then I think we're going to start making up some ground here. They might have a VDC letter of mark. Yeah, we're getting close, right? We're we're getting to the point where we have to start thinking. Uh, when does our boy is going to be jumping to Intania? Remember old uh, Jeremy, the scout? He's going to be in Intania soon, and we're only a jump three away, so we could meet. But again, Jeremy is he's he's so far in the future. He's not available until April fifteenth, so we're still like sixteen days away from that. More than that, aren't we? Yeah. At, at any rate, let's find out what the reaction is. So we hail them and say, yeah, oops, what are you going to do? And we get a six minus one. They're hostile. They may attack. Oh. They may be used to determine the response of a person a business offers. Reactions govern the reliability and quantity, right? Because our planet, oh, our planetary population is, 
wait, wait a minute, 11 or greater? This is one of those little wrinkles that was not play tested or they didn't catch it. This is why we use play testers, right? Your population can't be higher than A unless, so that means it's a six, they're unreceptive, they don't want to talk to us. And that's fine. We, we, we got enough problems of our own. We, you know, we don't need to, we don't need to borrow trouble from somebody else. How do you get a population of 11? You, you, you can't, can you? All, all the population is, like the only modifiers of that role are 2d6 minus 2. 10 is as high as it goes. So th that's, all right, that's good. And then if a character has served five or more terms, oh, we are actually at a plus one now that I think about it. So they're still non-committal with a seven because we have, on our ship, we have a couple of guys with five terms. Uh, who, who would be doing the talking for us? Who's the old man of the of the of the mission? I didn't write down Munderduce's age. No, I wrote that down. Oh, it's over on his character sheet. Uh, come here, Munderduce. How old are you? Forty-two years old. Yeah, he served six terms, so he gets a plus one on his reactions. We got a seven. Remember, charisma is not a dump stat. You you could also argue that with his charisma of of I can't I haven't memorized his character sheet yet, so I gotta pull it back out and relook at it. Munderduce has a social of oh it's only seven. He's average. Alright. So we go back. Now, here's the other question. A couple of guys had some great comments after the last live stream. They said, hey, you got 45 tons of, of cargo. I grab my notes from last time. I didn't clean these up a whole lot because why would I? We're still there. I, I need to. I've got the, the fancy chart that shows your, your cargo, and this is where this starts to become very relevant because if you recall, we have 45 tons of goods bound for Cyric, but we're at Tardmark. The week that we spend at Tardmart is spent flushing the system, repairing whatever went wrong, you know, springs go sproing, and we need our engineer to, to do a, a full once-over, make sure everything's good, we got to reprogram, generate new coordinates, and w because we hit the gas giant, we don't have to spend the 18,000 credits on refueling. Isn't that great? That's kind of nice. We do need to dock, though. Well, or, or do we? So here's the question. If we only needed to spend a day to get to the gas giant, we could conceivably jump straight to Cyric, right? Without going down to the surface of Tardmart. And I'm going to turn this over to the chat. Do you think that's the smart play here? This just means that we have to, we're already, well, we have to get 100 planetary diameters outside of the gas giant, right? So if we want to save three days and spend another week jumping to Cyric, we can get there. The other option is to spend three days going to Tardmart and picking up another cargo, which we can take to Cyric. And there may even be more passengers. Now bear in mind, we're only going to be rolling uh, 2d6 to find out what additional cargo is headed to Cyric. This won't affect our, our chances of having another misjunk. So we, we could save three days and make it to Cyric, you know, basically eight days late. Or we could take a full ten days, get down to Tardmark, grab some more cargo, grab some more passengers, and then jump to Cyric. The other thing to consider is if we land at Tardmark, and, and here's where things get a little bit more complicated. If I land at Tardmark, does that mean I need to do a refresh on the cabins? Because that's 60,000 extra credits we're going to have to spend for landing on Tardmark. And, and I don't know, man, rolling 2d6 to see how much cargo is available, not an official roll. All right, so this is another 10 tons of cargo. Well, no, that's another 50 tons of cargo. I've got room for it. I could take all of this. And that's another 50,000 credits. If I pick up two more passengers, I'm going to be now adding to my total profit. Right? You have to recharge your life support? Do I, Vic? That's a great question. I don't think I do, but I don't have enough confidence 
in my knowledge of these rules to say that with any authority. I believe that we have enough consumables to last a month. We sail one week, we get to make another jump, we sail another week. I think we're still within that one month, but I'm not entirely sure that that's how it works. This being Proto Traveler, maybe you are not either, so let us take a look at that together. It's not in ships, it's, it's over here in operating expenses. Life support, each stateroom costs 2000 per trip made, and that's where things get complicated. Are we still in the same trip? Or is this a now adding an additional trip? It's Well, Vic, it doesn't say per jump. It just says per trip. Hmm. Which is a bit of a pickle for us. Things are unclear. Uh, that's for the cost. Passengers, let's see. Does, does, does the passengers help us out? Uh, differences, that is to say a starship jump three charges the same passage as jump one. Uh, the difference is jump three can reach a destination of one jump that would take the jump one ship three separate jumps to reach. Ah, so this tells me that that trips and jumps are two different things. If I were taking somebody on a trip that took three jumps, but it's still one trip, so, for example, if I was going from Tobor to Cyric with jump one, jump one, jump one, that's two weeks, but it's one trip. So, I think that if I don't land on the planet, I can save 60,000 credits. I still think two jumps is one trip. Dartmart is calling for more cargo and passengers. The other thing to be aware of is that I'm not letting Chad Solo off the ship. He's got to stay there and do maintenance for the week. So I'm not going to roll any random encounters while we're on Tardmark. We're just going to burn the time, and we're going to jump back to Syret to fulfill our contracts. Uh, somebody suggested, why don't you just sell the 45 tons of cargo on Tardmark? And the answer to that is a little bit complicated. The first complication is it's just generic cargo. It's sealed containers. If I broke the containers open, I would have to roll on this chart for each of the containers. And I'd have to go back to my notes and figure out, well, I had eight containers with five tons each. What does that mean? And some of these wouldn't matter. And then I'd have to roll to see how much it is. And all of that is very hard. So I'm going to do that thing where we rationalize a decision that simplifies our life. And just remember that if we do that, the other issue is we still have mail. I didn't think about that. We could pick up the mail, and we could make a mail run from Tardmart to Cyric, which would get us another 25,000 credits. Ooh. So even with the 60,000 refresh, I think we'd be okay. 81 print per trip or two weeks? Oh, the 81 print says per trip or per t for every two weeks. Uh, boy, we'd be pushing it, right? Two and a half, because we're looking at two and a half weeks. Uh, so there, there's a couple of things to consider. One is we're running the mail. We can't sell the mail. Still got to get to Cyric. If we break the, if we break that contract, we lose our subsidy. And now we are wanted by the Tard Martians, by the Corvinians, by, by the Tor Toborians. Everybody around here is going to be mad. And every single encounter we have with the ship is going to be hostile. Not only that, but we'd have to figure out what to do with the 25 passengers we're carrying. Could we sell those into slavery here? I first of all, just as a as a regular person, I'm not comfortable with going that dark. I I like to to be the hero. I consider myself a paladin of the internet. I am an aggressive paladin, and so I'm gonna try to always err on the side of what is good, what is right, and what is beautiful. Uh, and then, like I said, it would be hard. I'm gonna fulfill the contract. We're gonna try to jump back to Cyric, and it gets harder. Because now our impulse drives, we are at plus three. One for here, one for here, and one for here. And that means we're going we're gonna to break down on like an eight or better on that 2D6. We still only miss jump on a nine up. But, you know, there's a big risk here. Well, there, go to the bars and gather more intel on nearby systems. Well, uh, again, Dartmark, I'm not worried about that because... We're kind of looking at this through two different sets of eyes. 
you and I, as we look at this map right now, are looking at it through the eyes of Chad Solo. The fact that we've landed here, that, but that's not the case. The perspective that Captain Deuce has, he's got all the star charts for the entire subsector. He's got his route. You and I don't know what Dunder, Munder Deuce's route through this subsector is. We just said it's bing bing. And we don't know where else the pinball goes. We need to find ourselves a couple of more. And I'm guessing this is going to be a real lucrative place to land. But only if there's a class A or B starport somewhere nearby that our route will take us. Danger jump. Danger jump. Take a deep breath of the good juice. Danger jump. Try to get to the good juice. I hope that makes sense. Two weeks takes into account your time in port. All jumps take one week. Mm -mm -mm -mm. Yes. So here, if if you're reading that, we drive out to here. If we jump to here, that's a week. And jump to here, that's a week. Uh, eighty one On the 81 print, it's per trip or two weeks. So I... But, but again, if, you, if you're jumping across a gap of two hexes with a jump one ship, let's say I got a scout, and I'm going from here to here, or, or alternatively here, assume for the moment that there's no systems in here. If I jump to here, and then I jump to here, and there's no system, I'm not, I, there's nobody to pay 2,000 credits to. Then I make my second jump to here, now I have to pay for the refresh on my little scout ship, right? Eight grand out the window. But... You know, that's one, two, that's a week and a week. Let's see, one, two, yeah. And then that third, that's a third jump, right? So it took us three weeks to make that journey, but I'm only paying one time. So I'm saying per journey, and I think that, that we're in a, a setting here where if we don't land, I don't have to pay the refresh. But I think I want to land because I think it's going to pay off in the long run. I think we're going to get enough passengers on Tardmart that are trying to get to Cyric. Maybe Cyric is an intermediate for people that are going to Herndon and trying to beat the reins so they can do a little shroom farming. Will cargo spoil or passengers revolt if you don't go to the proclaimed destination? Ah, that's a great question, John Willis. Uh, yes, right? The passengers are going to start getting a little testy if you don't get them there. But I assume that they understand that they live in a system that doesn't have refined fuel. So they knew the risks. They, they knew what they were getting into. They signed the waivers. I'm not too worried about them. But if it does get to be too long, then they might, they might start dropping mail and writing their, their um, religious congressmen and all of that. Tartmart says, there's a simple solution to, to uppity passengers. The, the, the offer to let them walk to their destination. I will hold the door open for you, but not both the inner and outer airlock door at the same time. Um, I think after all that discussion, I think we need to land. I think we need to make some repairs. I think we need to pay the sixty grand to refresh. So that being the case, let's take a look at this. Uh, let's take a look at this cargo manifest, right? I've got forty-five tons of trade goods that are headed for, and then this is how you track all of those little oddball things that you pick up. But I'm going to go ahead and just say, you know, it's the price was the five k five kilo credits each. And the world price, and, and it's headed for Cyric. And then I'll write down five tons of mail at 25 kilocredits each. And that's headed for Cyric as well. I'm, I'm doing that now because I suspect, knowing, the way, knowing our luck, we're going to miss jump and wind up on, in Intania. And we're going to be desperately trying to get to... You know, that has refined fuel. There's zero chance we'll land in Antania. We will probably land... Let's see. One, two, three, four, five. Yeah. No, Janov has refined fuel. Wait. One, two, three. I've only rolled three systems with refined fuel. I'm at like 16% when I should be at 40. Wow. We are definitely playing on hard. Okay, so but anyway, the point stands, right? I, I got to write this down because there's a very good chance that we wind up completely across the map. Uh, and even if we don't, right? Like any one of these, we could wind up 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 here, and you know, hopefully we're in, we're in another system. We don't have two hulks floating around. Uh, so now that I've written that down, let me go back to my notes. 
And we got to write down, so this column over here, this is what we were hoping would happen for the run to Cyric. Now we are coming out of Tardmark. The other thing to bear in mind is that we are going to be advancing ourselves well into the month of April. Hey, that's great. That gives us lots of time. One, two, three. We can figure out what planets are in this whole quarter. This is a whole lot of space and a whole lot of systems to build out. Hey, Bill Cedar Heath. Welcome to the channel. Finally managed to catch it live. He's been waiting to try this game since the 80s. For one reason or another, never got to. Hey, I'm glad I'm pulling you into giving it a go. It's a great little solo war game. It's a, or, Yeah, no, it's a war game. Although we haven't had a whole lot of... Well, no, we had a street war. That counts. It's a war game. We just haven't done any shoot 'em ups with the, the, the vessels. If something happens to the money changer, maybe we will just get a cruiser and go full pirate. But not this day. <laughs> says the guy who says, I don't like to go too dark, but I'm going to go pirate. All right, so we land on Tardmark. And that's going to cost the captain 100 credits for the week. And all the locals go, you must got two for brains driving off the end of the road like that. And then, the, and then the captain's like, all right, that's funny, you yokels. How much does it cost? How much you got in your wallet? Y'all know what I'm talking about. I should have named, oh, man, I should have named my, my Captain Clark Griswold. That's the next ship, baby. Yeah, Cyric, space combat is pretty dangerous. We could even do a one-off since we have, like, all of April to play with. Maybe we do a, a Tard Martians busting up a pirate base somewhere. That could be a lot of fun. Just, just you know, just to add a little bit of, like, faction play and a little bit of uh, get some experience under our belts with the, the, the combat rules. Right, so we've landed on Tardmark, and I already calculated the time. We're going to be there a week before we set out. So the first thing we got to do is figure out our, our haul. Two, di two dice to get to Cyric, and just, to, you know, just to, to show my cards... Uh, oh, ba -ba 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 -ba. I, I figured it out. We said that the law level is 9, which is the highest, and it is tech level C. And, no, you know what? Ackerley has a slightly higher. Ackerley and Janov, 36. Corvinus is tech level C. Yeah, so there's, there's some pretty high tech levels here. I stand corrected. All right, that's why we check. Cyric, as I said, has got a population of two. That means we are only going to be taking two D6. <laughs> I should have, should have gone with the other one. All right, so we're going we're gonna to pick up ten tons to Cyric. And that's going to be, right, so you, you, you multiply by five, and so that's going to be ten grand. And then we're going to have five tons of mail. And if you, if you, if for those of you keeping score at home, this now we're going to load up 55 and 10. And so this becomes 50 grand that we'll be able to make up. And the, you know, that's a quarter of a million credits, baby. 260,000 credits if we can get there. I mean, we only get to keep half of that, but, but that's all right. We, we may, we're still okay. Then the question becomes how many, remember we only have 20 staterooms that are capable of hauling people. We've already filled six of them. Eight is the most additional passengers that we can pick up. And boy howdy do we want them. Now we are on the originating world of, and oh, oh you know, because the originating world is a population 10, we roll two dice and subtract one. Ah, but because we're going to a population two, we subtract one from the high. So there are seven people waiting. And what did I say? I only have eight staterooms left. Okay, so seven high passage. And then for the middle, again, we're at minus two, so we get three minus three. Nobody wants to fly middle. That's fine. I, I can deal. And then it's four dice in low, and I have plenty of space in low, but I have to subtract four from that for my destination, so I take out these four, 
and I've got 10 more low passage. So that's another 80, and we have now made up the difference. This is going to pay off. You know, it's going to help offset the costs of the overrun. We may need to give these guys a bit of a, a tax break. We, we're, you know, we're not exactly Southwest Airlines here, right? Yeah, we're really badly delayed. Sucks to be you. Let me throw a Twinkie at you. Here's a packet of pretzels. We may have to cut, not, not low passengers, we don't care about them, but like the high passengers and mid, we may give them like a 10% discount because of the extra delay. But maybe they're happy, you know, maybe they were excited. Maybe some of these guys were looking to get to, to, to Tardmart anyway. Not going to deal with that. I'm just going to say, for now, I, you know what, let's, let's do that. Let's, let's go ahead and give these guys, we're, we're going to give these guys a 20% discount. Uh, I don't have to, but this is what a good captain does. I'm going to make this uh, 48000 and then these guys, it goes from thirty-six. We have to subtract uh, 7200 so that's going to go to twenty nine eight. I I know that's a lot to give up, but, but you know, the 20% discount will keep so many people happy. And, and ultimately, the other thing that this does is it gives us incentive to keep hitting these Gives us additional incentive to be as responsible as possible with trying to use the good fuel. Was there anything I'm missing? Ah, we do have the opportunity. Because it's a big world, there's a lot for sale here. Let's see if there's anything that we can buy on spec. Oh, I, okay. Ah, that's, that's the question. Remember, it costs us... 60,000 credits. Am I missing anything on the, the cost of, of operating the ship? So we skim the fuel, which we're probably going to get some dirty looks from the guys running the pumps down there on uh, the, at, the, at the starport. Uh, -da 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 -da. I, I want to know. Starship components. So fuel, I'm just going down the checklist. We do have our 30 staterooms. That's going to cost us 60 grand. And we may need to come back here because at Tardmart, we're going to be at minus 60. And I think what we'll do is we got to take out a loan at, we'll call it 10%, so that we have to owe 6,000. We got to pay that note back but that will allow us to refresh our staterooms. We don't have to worry about crew salaries. We paid those on the first. The other deal is we've only got 53,000. So if we want to minimize our expenses instead of borrowing this 60,000, we can dip in. We can only borrow 10000 But Vic, Vic sees it coming. He knows where I'm going with this. So let's do that. Let's just borrow 10000 Because that way, you know, in addition to only being 10000 in the red, we're only going to have to pay back 1000 credits, right? So here we go. And this is easy. That's the other thing is. There we go. See, so, so old Munderdeuce, he's down to 3000 cash on hand. And then, as he's scratching his head, and he says, I, I guess I got to go down to the goblin town because I'm going to have to borrow or I'm going to have to beg for charity. I'm going to have to sign up to become a Dagonian. An angel appears and says, you know, boss, I got a little bit of cash. Ah... But you're the intern, says Munderduce. And Chad says, yeah, but, you know, I appreciate everything you're doing for me. And, uh, you know, maybe instead of paying the bank, maybe you could pay me that thousand. Pay me that note. In fact, I'll even cut you a discount. I'll, get, I'll pay you 500. But you, not only, this, not only that, but you got to start paying me on May 1st. Like we had talked about me working through April and not taking pay in May, you're going to have to pay me. 
So that's kind of like 3,500, but it keeps him in the air. It keeps the people happy. And we'll, we'll, we'll give him, you know, Chad's a good, Chad's a good guy. He says he's, he wants to see the world. He says, but you got to give me two days leave as well. And Munderdew says, you know what? I like that idea. I, I can do that. So we come over here, and now Chad is down to 40 grand. But he stands to make a little bit of money. And this is a I O U to Chad. And we get to make two random encounter checks. So, and I don't know which day they are. It doesn't really matter. On the first day, whoop, we have a random encounter. And that encounter is going to be Black Die is the Tens. The Black Die is the Tens. We get a 65. And when you have randos busting in, and we'll say once again, he's walking around. It's just Chad. He says, I want to take my buddy with me. Yeah, who's your pal? Who's your good friend? And it was our combat monster. It was our assistant to the steward. No, it was our assistant steward, uh, who is unnamed yet. Oh, that's too bad. He's kind of a beast. Who else is? Maybe we should take Hans. No, we're taking the pilot. Hans isn't. Is a boss. Look at that. Triple A's. Whoo. And he's got no, like, fighty skills, but that's all right. We're taking triple A with us. And, and, and that's good because we rolled 65 for meet new friends. And we are going to be at minus one on our reaction chart. Hey, where are they? Here they are. 65. And wouldn't you know what 65 is? The random encountering. All right, well, for the random encounter, what I like to do in that case is we ran into a potential Patron. No, we're drinking Patron, and we ran into a potential Patron. Which means I still have to find that, that page in my rule book. Ya yeah boy, so the row is in black, the column is in white. A 5-4 means we encountered a 5-4. A governor. So one of the high he says, dang old, what are you boys doing down here? Dang old ship guys running around. And and we don't really want anything. Let's find out what he thinks of us. Did we accidentally insult him? We get a oh boy. We're at minus one. So we're down there yapping. And he says, dang old. Uh, what, I can't remember. What's the guy's name? Um, he's not going to be a governor. He's going to be one of the bishops. We run into Bishop Boomauer. And Bishop Boomauer says, dangle, dangle, dagonians. It's, oh, you know what it is? He heard about what happened already. News has already reached Tardmart about what happened in Corvinus. And he says, oh, dang, dang old chassel, I dang, dang old heard about you doing all the thing with, you, with $5 million for the church, but you dang old got in a fight and you... With, with the guys, and, and Chad tries to like, explain to him, no, 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 your followers, like, I was out drinking, and they attacked us, and I just left because I really respect you guys and don't want to get in a fight, but it doesn't do any good. Because we rolled a total of three, remember if the, oh, no, reactions of two and 12 are not subject to modifiers. Modified results of less than three become three. All right, so this is still a hostile attacks on an eight. Uh, we're not we're not doing well here. So on an eight or better, he like does the the old he does the uh, these spacers ain't right and and we get attacked. All right, so on an on a four we're okay, but we have a negative and minus one modifier because we have offended the Dagonians. We have another day to get through, five or six, and wouldn't you know it, we run into another batch of trouble. 45 this time means we run into a banditos. We, we're going to get robbed. We're going to get robbed of everything we're carrying, 3d6 of them with, so that was 45, right? Yep. And our reaction roll is going to be, it's not too bad, actually. Uh, I, because they're wanted by the law, I guess we, we get mugged, and with the result of a 9, our reaction is going to be uh, intrigued. So they beat him up, and they steal D600, 300 credits, 
and they leave him hurting, and he's going to go back to the ship. He's had enough. I get it. So bandits cost Chad another 300. He is going to be down to... He doesn't take the whole 40,000. He doesn't take his whole bankroll with him. So he's down to 40,900. And he says, that's it. He's going to have to spend the next week recovering from his wounds. Not even going to do the thing. Have you fellers had a look at this video of this old, this year old Tipno Toad? All right, so we got through that. Now comes the fun. Hey, we're back on the ship. And, and we'll go to the calendar. We'll, we'll figure this out. I guess I could turn the page on that. Uh, we arrive here, and we spend six days, and then we have to sail out, and then we jump, hopefully, to Cyric. All right? And if everything goes well, uh, this, wait a minute, so we, we spend a week, we're, we're going to land on Cyric on the 25th. Right? So here's what we got here. We spent a week loading. We got through, we just did a couple of days of uh, of random encounters, and then we jump, and then we'll be there on the 25th. So yeah, so this is going to take us through the end of April. It's going to be really important I take good notes so that I remember all of these little modifiers. We know that the Church of Dagon does not like uh, the the heretic who comes from a watery planet and has rejected the bubbly song of Dagon. That puts us back into outer space and back on the risky road we're like dry ice road truckers here, baby. Moon ice, Martian ice truckers. When you want to. So the first thing you do, we're using contaminated fuel. If it's used, there's a chance the drive will fail while in flight. On an 11 up, we crash and burn. Throwing once per jump in which unrefined fuel is used. Well, we did it once and twice. We are now at plus two. We need to get less than a nine. So five, it's a seven. Okay, so our, our sublight drives are still good. Now we have to jump, and once again, we're using unrefined fuel. We don't want, we've got a plus three to this roll, looking to get less than 12. Seven plus three is 10. We are okay. We jump to Cyric. We land safely, and we begin our week. I can run the numbers now. When do I roll for the Black Raven again? Uh, this Sunday? Do you want me to roll right now? I'll show you how I've been keeping track of that. Uh, there is, uh, here's, here's March, and I needed to roll on the 24th, and then on the 31st. So on boxcars, nope, for the 24th, and now for the 31st, uh, nope, that's a, uh, that's a nine. So, I have completed my checks, they are still stuck out there in March. And then just to, what I've been doing is I have a little BR... And this is my visual reminder. That's why I didn't remember to do it, because I didn't write my little reminder down. Every Sunday, I roll to see if boxcars. And if so, then we roll for the encounter. Thank you for the reminder. I appreciate that, Vic. Uh, Maxime Thibault. This is Traveler. Let me be a little more precise. There are at least seven or eight different versions of this. I am using the OG 1977 Game Designers Workshop by Mark Millar. See, there it is, 1977. This is not even the facsimile edition. It's not 1981. It is the original game in all of its glory. Warts, glorious warts and all. There are some weird things that happen. We touched on this earlier. You have a modifier to your reaction rolls if you're on a planet with a population of 11 or more. That's 100 billion. But there's no way to generate a planet with 100 billion people. So why do we even have that? Well, arguably because you could, as a GM, design a subsector from the bottom up and put planets with 100 billion people on it, in which case your PCs would be running into that minus one modifier. But for us, there's no mechanical way of achieving that number. Uh, Dan Young, I was trying to catch up on previous live videos. Hey, I'm glad to have you here, Dan. I really do appreciate it. Good night, John Willis. Thanks, for, Wills. Thanks for stopping by. All right. Where does that leave us? We, we're going to run some numbers. We're going to figure out some some profits and losses. And then we're going to, I don't know, we'll see how much time we have left before my time and attention gives up. So as I said... 
we are going to have to we we can we can we've dropped off our we've got 55 tons of material so it's bishop bishop boomauer boomauer and then there's probably that means there's a bishop dribble too or is it cardinal dribble it's probably cardinal boomauer right anyway it doesn't matter what does matter is i've got 55 tons of material and if you multiply that by uh, five, you're going to get uh, 275,000 credits. Then we have a total of 13. All right, well, and it gets a little bit complicated because these six passengers, these high passengers, we gave them a 20% discount because it took us 10 days longer to get them there than they anticipated. Maybe they missed an important business meeting. So that's only 48,000. But these seven high passengers coming from Tardmart, the, these pilgrims, they net us the full 70,000. That's 118. This, man, this little... You know, I'm starting to wonder if that was a missed jump at all. I'm wondering if old Munderdeuce didn't uh, do a little... Oopsie, hoo hoo tee, how silly of me to have accidentally jumped to the big planet. And by the way, it, but we're going to need it because it's going to be really expensive refueling. Then we have six medium passengers, which are going to, medium passage passengers, and we have a total of 23 low. I The class of Starship that we are running here, I think it has 80, which is... I, that makes me laugh. 80 um, companion cubes? Really? You, you expect us to ever reach 80 companions? Or 80 low passenger passages? We're, mm. You guys ever do this when you're playing games? You, you got like eight sheets out, and you think you know where everything is located, and you just don't. Where? Where's my starship? Here it is. Yeah, look at that. Look at that. 80 low berths. We got, we got 30 staterooms, 20, 10 of which the crew has. So I only have 20 available. And I used 19 of them this time. That's some efficient hauling right there. I've got 80 companion cubes I can stuff people in. I only had 23 people, and I am not giving them a discount. They don't even know. I'll be like, no, it's, it's totally Sunday. Uh, and then it's going to be 50000 for mail, because I took the mail from Sire to Sark from both Tobor and Tardmart. Cha-ching. I think that's it. That's everything. Man, if we had some spec, it's probably better that we didn't. Maybe that's what Chad was doing down there when he got jumped by the bandits. Maybe he was looking for some spec. He had 40000 he could have spent, but I totally forgot. So let's see what we made here. Our gross is going to be, let's see, 12, 25, carry the 2, that's 10, 9, carry the 1, 498,800 credits. Money, money, I'm telling you, baby, we're making it rain, except all the government steps in, and they're going to take a total of, I, all right, th this is beyond me now. I'm going to have to break out the Google Math. 495,800 divided by 2 is going to be a total of 247,900 credits equals 247,900 credits. Oh, but you know what? We also need to figure out that 55 tons is going to cost us, so it's 55 tons, 550 credits for hauling down to the surface. So that's only 247, 350 credits. Oh, but we have to pay 10,500 to Chad. So this goes up to 50 and 5, 50,590. And that takes us to 230. 6,850 credits in the bank. Yeah, boy. Now I got to subtract the 60,000 because I got to do my full refresh. I got to hose out the 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 staterooms there. And that's going to be, you know, oh, you know what? Now that I think about it, 
You know what I would have been well within my rights to do? It's too late. But for future reference, I've got a steward working for me to keep people satisfied. And I probably could have said, look, why, why am I not putting this guy to work? He's steward too. This is where, you know, having other players comes in handy. Say, look, he's got to convince these people that this is a good thing. I'm going to make a steward check. Now, this is what I should have done. And, you know, I go through it because it will remind me next time. I make a misjump, and you all know there's going to be a next time. The, the target number is eight. I'm at plus two. The target number is six. So if I can beat that, then we'll, we'll say if I, if I beat it, if I roll a 10 or better, then I don't have to do the discount. But if I fail, then the discount is going to be 25%. And so with a six, I just made it. I only have to cost myself 10%. Whereas if I had rolled like a 10, then yeah, there's no discount. People are happy. They're having a good time. He's a good steward. He's a good steward. Oh, we're taking a little detour. I want to show you guys something fancy. He takes him down and, you know, again, I, I, I think I'm within my rights to do that. And, then, and to say, look, you guys understood the risks and I'm going to give you that 10% discount. I'm going to, or, or that 10, instead of the discount, I'm going to, it's still going to be full charge, but I'm going to treat you to a night out in the, um, I don't know, the, the gardens of, of watery Rome, of, of the, the Rome of Dagon. It's, it's the, the Arlen Temple. That I think you have to call the capital of the Church of Dagon Arlen. And, all right, so that means, but back, back to the, the finances. Once we back out the 60,000 credits, and then, oh, here's where it gets really pricey. I have to buy 180 tons of fuel at 500 per. So that's going to be 90,000. So this 60, in order to refuel, wait, is that right? Did I do that right? Five, there's three and then eight. Is it, is it 90? Is that right? 90,000? I think I wrote it down on the, on the Starship here so I wouldn't have to do that every time. Yeah, it's 90,000 to refuel. But... This is refined fuel, so I gotta I gotta pull off one hundred and fifty thousand, and and you know we're all sitting here. Oh look, we made all this money. We made all this money. No, we didn't make no money. I mean, we made a little bit because this is gonna come down to um, th this becomes carry the two. This is gonna come down to seventy six thousand eight hundred and fifty credits. So we're we're actually doing okay. We did make we we have cleared seventy six thousand, and I'm going to add that to Munderduce's tally. 79,350 credits. How about that? And I, you know, I, I can't complain, man. I think we, we really turned that sow's ear into a silk purse. I think we spun gold from straw. We spun credits from misjumps. I think this is why Munderduce has been such a valuable addition. He has been a solid starship captain for low these many years. His ship is only 20 years old and it's still making its way in this difficult corner of the galaxy. And the last, so that brings us now to let's go ahead and find out what kind of star systems. Let's, let's fill in these gaps here. Okay. And I'm going to start at 0607 and work my way around. I want to do the seven systems that are right in here first so that's going to be my order, and it's going to be on a 1, 2, 3, we have a system. And on a 4, 5, 6, we do not. So we do, we do not. We do not, we do not. There is a system here, and there is none, none, and none. So now I have to go 1, 2, 3. There is, there is, and there is. Yeah, baby. So we've got... Four more chances at refined fuel. And while we're at it, let's find out. One, two, three, four, five, six. That's pretty good. Yeah, let's do those six. And again, on a one, two, or three, yup, nope. So there's one here. There's a no. And there's another no. And then 0505 is a no. 0506 is a yup. And 0507 is a no. So it's getting a little crowded in here, fellas. Now with these, and I well, let's, let's do 05082 just because it kind of 
See, did I did I forget this one? Was this a no? I can't remember 0505. I think that was a no. Uh, if you go back and watch this and you're mad at me because I, I got it wrong, then I apologize. 0508. And that is a yes. So there is another system right here. And, and I think this is probably a pretty good corner. This is where we're going to limit our passage of, I'm going to do 0803 just because that one little text is bothering me. Yeah, there's nothing there. So we do have like a little gap in the systems here where it's a jump to. And I think that if we, we've got these one, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, that's going to keep us busy doing all those, figuring out all of the politics. It's a really good bet that some of these guys are heavily under the sway of the religious nutters. Maxwell Fraley, nice to meet you. Who and you know what the other thing I can do? I'm I'm just gonna start dropping them because we've got some new guys in the chat. I really appreciate having you guys around. So who are some of the other guys that were like just introducing themselves for the first time? Love you, appreciate you so much. And so what I'm gonna do is I am going to uh, this is gonna be the uh, I'm gonna name these systems after you you noobs. Cedar Heath. Oh, that's a long one. I gotta squeeze that in. This is going to be Cedar Heath right here. You have been immortalized un until Google goes uh, bankrupt. What else do we got? We got we got a, a system called Hansen. That's a good one. Hansen's going to be right down here. H A N S E N. And then I need O six O seven. So we're going to name one after I saw some new names. I uh, was trying to correct the previous. This is going to be Young Dan. Young Dan. You know what I'm talking about. And then the, the, some of these other ones I'll have to do later. You know. You know not. And then this is, oh, this is going to be a really alien one. It's going to be Y Nothna. Welcome aboard, Anthony. You are whatever the system is here. It might be awesome. It might be lame, but it's named after you. Don't tell me I'm too late. No, you're you're right here. You know, if not, whenever I say that, I just make, I just did the old nose and rough thing. Okay, you grognards know what I'm talking about. Steading of the hill giant nose and rough. Say it backwards. You'll get it. I still have uh, one, two, three more names to to go through, but. I'm not going to worry about that just yet. I, the only thing I'm really concerned about at this point is there's three things. The base, the starport, and then, because I don't want to think about it anymore, the starport determines the presence of scout bases, and I also want to know whether or not there are gas giants. How gassy are you, Anthony? Well, I don't know about you, but I'm about to find out how gassy your system is. Hansen, 10 up. Yeah, there's one there. What about Youngden? Uh, I got a four. Yeah, there's one there. What about Inothna? Yeah, there's one there. We're finally getting these, these gas giants. And that's what the little orange thing is here with the little ring around it. Yenothna, you're a gassy boy. And then Cedar Heath gets a five. And then we've got three more. So yes. Yes, and yes. Oh, look at all the gas. Oh, that's what we want to see. That's going to save us some money. In fact, I may need to add that additional step that when you jump in, we just roll, and on like a, like a, like a nine up, you can, re, you can skim the gas giant. All right, so that's independent of all others. That's why it's so easy. Maxwell, Fr oh, Fraley. Yeah, that's the one I wanted to do. Fraley. Fraley, and I know I misspelled it, but that's because I want to be, make it impersonal. So when Fraley gets nuked, when the hell divers start dropping planet busting bombs on it, then I don't feel so bad because I don't feel like I killed you. You know what I mean? Anthony, you should, man. This is a lot of fun. Uh, there, there are enough little, you know, this, I'll tell you what's great about these old games like this. They have subsystems that you can play with and enjoy in their own right. There's all these little things to explore. We've barely scratched the surface of this. It's only three little black books, and there's just so many worlds of adventure. We haven't even begun, like, like I we already did the animal adventure. That was a lot of fun, but I haven't, we've done a little bit of ship construction. I haven't designed a, sh a ship from the ground up yet, but 
Look at all this, man. Planetary templates. Look at this. This is vector movement. Oh, man, the physicist. That little corner of my soul that still retains that little bit of college physics. Look, look at these equations. Oh, I actually earned a math minor in college. I just didn't fill out the paperwork because I didn't care. Oh, I got to get a protractor. Oh, oh. Oh, the nerd in me is just jumping for joy. I, I also need to figure out the jump routes. Uh, there may be some around here. So let's start with Hansen. Hansen. I got to roll on the starport chart, which looks exactly, looks a little something like this. I'm going to put it up there so you can see it. I know it's hard to see, but what are you going to do? Uh, so I roll 2d6. There's no modifiers, and I'm hoping for six or less. Hansen. Ah, help. Oh, Hansen. All right, well, I won't hold it against you. What about Youngden? I get a seven. A lot of, a lot of Class C starports. It's a middle-class part of the galaxy. Uh, Inulfna with a nine, Class D. Not helping me out. Cedar Heath, man. I'm counting on you, Cedar Heath. Oh, you they. All right, C. And then Fraley, man. Fraley, are you there for me? Are you there for me, Fraley? With a five, we've got that class B. Yeah, boy, that helps. That really helps. Because now we, we are on Cyric. We can hit Tardmart. We can hit Fraley. Uh, maybe an off now, but we're going to have to take a look at how big these systems are as well. And then I'm going to check this unnamed system. The system to be named later is a class C. Man, it's so crazy how seven is the most popular number to roll. I wonder if anyone ever noticed that before. Class B. Yeah, boy. All right. Whoever would have thought I would be so excited about just having a, a little thing. Now, the other thing I want to do, because this will help determine things, is see this chart? I'm, I'm not going to... How do I do this, man? There's no good way to show that chart and over here. Uh, I, I should have done that. I should have done the, the horizontal. I'm kicking myself now. I'm so stupid. Oh. All right. Well, I can't show it to you. You're just going to have to trust me. I need to know whether there is a link between Herndon and Hansen. A class C to a class D, there will be a jump route on a four or less. Wait, is it four or less or four or more? Uh, if the one die roll is equal to or greater than, oh, there's no link there. All right, what about Youngden? We're looking for a four. Nope. Okay, what about Hansen to Youngden? From C to C on a three or greater. Yep. So these guys... Are connected like so. What about from Inulfna to Youngden? From B to C, that's going to be on a two or more. I rolled a six, so there will be a jump lane here. And then from B to D, ooh, I got to check. I already checked Cyric to Herndon. I got to check from Cyric. Now, this is a jump two to Youngden. That's only on a four or more. There is not. What about from Cyric to Inulfna? That is from a B to a D. That is on a 6 only. No. What about Cyric to Tardmart? From B to C, a jump to on a 4, 5, or 6. Yep. So I gotta, I'm going to bend it a little bit like Beckham. We're going to come down here and show that Cyric... Oh, look at that. that. Oh, that's why it was so easy to make that jump, because there's actually a jump lane there. I can't remember if I checked Yunolfna... Know, a dart mart on a four or better. So I'm going to check again. I got a three. There's no no connection. And then we've got, uh, let's do Cedar Heath to Enofna. That is from C to D on a four or better. Yup. So we're, we're getting some pretty good jump lanes through here, fellas. And then I'm going to take it from the perspective of from B to these guys. Uh, from B to B, is there a chance from B to B? Yeah, you know, Fraley might be connected to Cyric. That's a jump one, two, three. That's going to take a four or more. And we got it. So there is a jump lane that comes down here like this and hooks into Cyric. I'll have to think about how to present that. Uh, but now i got to go around the horn. C, C, C. So there's three of those from B to C. With just uh, jump one, on a one, there is not. So there is to Cedar Heath, there is not to Anothna, and there is not... Ha, ah, that's kind of funny. 
That's a lot of ones in a very bad place. And then from B to C here, likewise, anything but a one. Yeah, so there is a connection there. And then look at this, B, one, two, three, from B to B, on a four or better, Cyric, there is not. But there could be from here to here, B to C, and that is a jump two, so I need a four or better, there's not. And I think that's about it. The B to C, yeah, I think that's it for our jump lanes. K kind of a weird little connection here. Are there? Did I miss any? I did. What about from this B to this C? That's a jump two on a four, five, or six. There is not. Uh, from C to shining C, there's a on a six. There's a jump connection there. Look at that. We have now connected. We've got a little bit of a connection here. There could be one from Hinky to Cedar Heath, but I'm going to wait until I know what's located right here. Oh, my guys, you can see that. Did I check Cedar Heath to Hanson? You know, I don't think I did. I need to roll a six. There is not. Am I missing any? B to C, is there a, a possibility? Cyric could link to Hanson, but I need to roll a six. And, all right, Cyric, I guess it makes sense in a way. Ooh, and it's, we're just going to have to curve it a little bit. Cyric, because it's got the good go juice, I guess it makes sense that it's kind of, it's a bit of a hub there, isn't it? This might have been our loop right through here, but, man, that's a whole lot of, of space lanes. You wouldn't want to drive this loop. That's one, two, three, four, five jumps. To get the good stuff. Now, bear in mind, the other reason you can stop here. Uh, uh, th technically, you know, there's a lot of potential connections in here, but I'm I'm going to hold off. I think this is a pretty good network as it stands. Uh, we do have these 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. You know, we've got these 12, and then there's at least, well, that's 16, 17, 18, 19. So we've got about... We got about 30. We we've mapped out 50 of our 80. So we're doing pretty good on filling in the map. The the Fraley and this unnamed system up here, they're they're probably connected to some systems over here. Uh Go Away may be connected to one or two systems. We'd have to check when we know what they are. And um yeah, I guess I guess that's pretty good, man. I'm liking it. I'm liking it. We've got uh the other thing to, that I should point out, one of the reasons I'm at a like mental stopping point. Tardmart doesn't have anything fancy. It's not agricultural. It's not industrial. It's not not industrial. It, it's just it's just itself. You know, it's just it's just in the moment. It's just moisturized. It's just in its lane, doing its own thing. Um, and actually, you know, that's kind of funny. It is kind of on its own little space lane there too, isn't it? Uh, oh, I know the other thing I wanted to roll. The other thing that's independent of everything but the starports is the scout and the naval bases. Naval bases are present in our class B one. We've only got two of those. So naval base, naval base. You need an eight or better. We get a five and then Fraley has a seven. There's no naval bases. Scout bases are present on a nine and a nine. So no scout base and Fraley does not have a scout base. Now I got to check all my C bases. Scout bases are present on an eight or better. And I'm going to go one, two, three, four, five. Just right down the horn. One, two. So Cedar Heath has a scout base. We got a whole lot of scout bases out here. The National Galactic Graphic Society is busy, busy, busy. Tardmart. Ha oh, we already rolled for Tardmart. What am I doing? That was a roll for Youngden. And then it's one, two, three. And then I have to check for Hanson. Has a scout base. That's the press, and then scout bases are present on Yanothna on a seven or better. And wouldn't you know it, Yanothna does have the little triangle. It gets the black triangle of wonder. We didn't have any E class either. Yeah, solidly middle class system here. Kind of digging it, fellas. Playing Solo Classic Traveler, put out by Zozer Games. It's free at the moment on their website. Wait, you, Solo Classic Traveler? Who's Zozer Games? Is that a... Um, Maxwell. Uh, let's see. 
what are we talking about in the chat here? There's something interesting. Uh, if you're going... No beans on Cedar Heath. So what do we got here? Thinking if I go classic traveler. Bear in mind, I'm not playing classic. I'm playing traveler. I'm playing proto traveler. Uh, they're both good in my experience. Uh, classic traveler is easier to solo than mongoose. Yeah, the the more modern iterations lean far heavily, more heavily into the tabletop play than the solo play. Just across the board, back in the '70s, they're. Their campaign systems, I think, were, were outstanding from a, a bottom-up perspective, from a procedural generation perspective. Let's see. Uh, Mongoose Traveler is usually well-written and set up, but it lacks a lot of the classic Traveler charm. Uh, the other thing is, because I'm not using any of the supplements, I've updated a couple of the, the rules. I have the ability to build my own Imperium, I have my, or to build my own universe. I'm not nearly as beholden. I have read a couple of the adventures, and and I tell you, I think the Traveler adventures are better modules in a lot of ways than the D and D modules, because they are typically just a location and people with objectives, and then the the adventure guidance is not linear, and at least in most of the ones that I've found, they are far more sandboxy than what you will find in the earliest D&D adventures. Now, unfortunately, that makes them less useful for a solo gamer. I don't, because you have all of this hidden information and all of these variables to track, it becomes very difficult to implement them as a solo war gamer. But at the table, I think they are far better. The other, so that's the good news. The bad news is they are deeply tied to, and a lot of the text relates to how they are plugged into the Traveler universe, how they are tied into the Third Imperium. And if you're not using the Third Imperium, that's all kind of wasted. And because they are generally all predicated upon, okay, here's the situation. You're in a region that is like this. Well, I'm not in a region like that. I'm in my own region. So they don't do me a lot of good. In fact, they haven't done me a lot of good at understanding how to build an adventure for this, but that's okay because it looks based on the fact that we are now 18 episodes, 18 and a half if you include the short, into this campaign. We are, you know, approaching like 30 hours of play. Y you don't really need all of that Imperium setting, and and you don't even need all that much adventuring because, you know, we're, we're grognards. We know what we're doing. We, we know how to write an adventure. We know how to make things harder on ourselves than they really need to be. I mean, when it comes to making things harder on me than it needs to be, I have 25 years of the best teaching available. Uh, my guru at making things harder than they need to be is my, my, my blessed and lovely wife, who I'm glad to have. She has shown me so many ways to make things harder than they need to be, and it really has benefited my role-playing games in a lot of ways. Let's see. Uh, Classic Traveler is a nice cheat list of everything you need to check when entering a system. Uh, Mongoose doesn't. There's also a little book called Solo Companion, or something like that, which is excellent for framing your solo game. I'll look that up, Cyric. Uh, solo book out there for Cepheus Engine. I, you know, I hear mixed reviews on Cepheus Engine, but I'm a noob, so don't ask me. Cedar Heath to Hanson? Oh, yeah, I checked that. There's nothing. So I'm finally getting caught up on the chat. Uh, let's see. The version that only uses three books. Let's see. Zozer made Cepheus Engine. Paul Elliott is the author. And the playing solo classic Traveler thing. Yeah, like I said. Proto Traveler 77, Classic or 81. Both use the three little black books. And in, a, in an interview, if you poke around, you can find an interview with the man, the myth, the legend. Hey, appreciate him while you can. Mark Miller is 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 still with us, and you know, I just as a brief aside, you know, take a moment to to say a prayer for the restful repose of um, oh, James Ward. We recently lost one of the all time greats, one of those guys who is on the Olympus of you know the Mount Olympus. I don't know that I'd put him on Mount Rushmore. That would probably be like. Gary Gygax and uh, uh, Don Featherstone, at least the Mount Rushmore of, of Wargaming. Um, who would the others be? I have to think about that. M maybe the, the, the British Steve Jackson. Uh, maybe Mark Millar, Miller. M maybe? I, I'd have to think about that one, too. But James Ward, definitely one of those guys. Uh, oh, Mark Miller is active on X? How about that? 
Uh, let's see. Peter Hansen never played with the Imperium. Actually, prefer smaller empires. Yeah, I, you know the 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 question becomes how do you well, like what 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 the heck do you mean naval base like normally the naval base is pretty clear that's the the big boys that's the alliance thank you Dark Mark but when you don't that, that my, mostly minds their own business oddly enough I think the Imperium in Traveler is a lot like the Imperium in Warhammer Forty K. Or perhaps I should say the Imperium of Man owes a lot to the Third Imperium of Traveler. I'm not 100% sure, but I think the Third Imperium of Man predates the Imperium of Man. Is that what it's called? Third Imperium? Third Imperium of Man? In that you have these, like, hugely powerful navies that mostly leave these guys alone, but there is this naval base here that forces you to have to think about the Imperium. From time to time, if you read the the fluff on 40k, all of the combat is centered around places where fighting happens, but you don't get the resources to keep a planet like Terra going if you're not strip mining and and like ag mining and and drawing in resources from millions of different planets. Where you know, not all the planets are, um, not every planet has to be. A uh, Cadia, a, a, a Krieg, like like those are notable, and we talk about those a lot because those are the war planets. But there are again, and if you've read any of the like short story collections or the books, they sometimes talk about the fact that there are a lot of really nice places to live in the Warhammer 40k universe. Mind you, you are constantly under like. Ten swords of Damocles hanging over your heads. The orcs could show up at any time, right? You have to worry about the cult. You have to worry about the good guys, the Inquisition showing up and overturning every apple cart around. But there are, in a uni- in a galaxy that size with millions of planets, you know, millions and millions and millions, there are literally dozens of nice places to live. Uh, I'm a little afraid to interact with Mark Miller because, um, you know, don't don't meet your heroes and and I don't I don't know he he might take exception. Most of the really like wildly popular uh, tabletop RPG people uh, uh, are not um, thrilled with me because I say things like you don't need to spend money on RPG products to have a great time, and that endless splat is a is a fool's bargain. It's a treadmill that does more harm than good, and so the guys that are selling the RPG hot dogs uh, generally aren't happy with me. The Third Imperium is much more pleasant. It does predate it. Yeah, and, and again, the, the we all know, like, there's this no secret that the Warhammer 40k guys, they, they needed an excuse to fight battles, and they needed a place that was torn by war. So everything they wrote is really, really bad. And they took something like this, and they turned it up to 11. They took Judge Dredd, and they turned it up to 11. They took your your general orcs and they turned them up to 11. They took space bugs and they turned it up to 11. And that's amazing. It's an incredible intellectual property. And um, you know, I, more power to them. Uh, where do the turtles fall in all of this? Anywhere you drop them. Zamora Galaz. Let's see. Uh the Third Imperium is more pleasant. Uh in the 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 War Dogs Incorporated book, which I like to reference. Uh, it's it's one of the best traveler like non traveler licensed traveler books. The the major Imperium is tasked with. They're the reason that you have all these different tech levels. Like they enforce the fact that this planet has a tech level of six, and and right next to it, just three light years away, is a planet with a tech level of twelve. Well, why is that? And that's because you've got they're they're it, it's kind of unstated like the amber and the red zones. Uh, let's see, Pocket Empires is from Traveler 4. It's about smaller empires. Yeah, you know, at some point they played around a little bit with the meta plot of the Traveler universe and the Imperium fell apart. And so you could take that. But but again, it's I played a, a campaign of Stars Without Number that was set in the third Imperium and it was too big. We were each given a system and we were scattered around and there were, it was... You, know, you had to, to be able to look at a full sector, not just a subsector, not just a place with 40 systems, but like a full six by, you know, what is it, like four by four? So 16 times 40. I mean, you're talking about 
three three hundred planets. How do you juggle all that information? It was a little little uh, little hard for me. Guy Gak said, "Don't tell them they don't need the rules." So you're in good company. That's a good point, Bill Cedar Heath. Guy Gak was surprised when people wanted to pay companies to do their imagining for them. And that he was like, "Yeah, Judges Guild, if you want to throw your money away, go ahead and write up, do all that imagining for people." But I'm he figured that the people who would be most interested in playing his games based on the literature of the day would be well versed in the literature of the day and would know how to steal from the literature of the day. What he did not appreciate is that a lot of the people that were playing his game were 12 years old and they were being educated by people that hated the fantasy literature of the day. And, you know, they didn't have the backing in the ground. And in fact, I don't think I could have run this until I was 40 years old. I simply did not have enough of a, of a cultural understanding. I didn't have enough of a library to build upon to be able to throw in all of the different science fiction concepts that, that you see in this game or to really appreciate how this kind of campaign would run. When I was about 17, I picked up a copy of uh, Traveler 2300, and the first adventure that I read, I've mentioned this before, was where the Kafer Dawn, where the, the bad guy Kafer's, the alien race shows up. And Traveler 2300, at least the version I was looking at, it was like a D10 system that, that had all of this technical stuff for, for social and fighting, and then they're like, now go do some stuff. I didn't know what to do. I didn't have my town in a dungeon, but in space. And honestly, I don't think that I would have been able to run a campaign like this until after I had seen Firefly, until after I had seen uh, Andromeda, until after I had seen even something like um, Deep Space Nine, where you have a naval base and it's in a rough area where you've got these different polities that are that are fractious and it's the the neutral zone between them where you get into the spy craft and the smuggling and the you know all of that stuff um i i needed to know that and and that's where at least back in 1977 uh, unless you had read the EC Tub novels, on which this was, I had to read at least five of those to really understand what this was all about, or or even see a film like you know I it, some people have mentioned it before and we've talked we've kind of glossed over it, but even a movie like Ice Pirates, as ridiculous as it is, that is a you know fundamentally the, you've got multi system empires that have very high tech levels. And then you've got these lower tech level planets that are basically Mad Max. And I mean, ultimately, one of the things that I like, so you know, even something as ridiculous as Ice Pirates is it, it's, it's a spring from which you can draw the waters of a wonderful campaign. And even something like, I would even go so far as to say it really helped me to watch a TV show like Lost and Doctor Who. And not because of the science fiction elements, but because Lost and Doctor Who and the original Star Trek series, one of the dirty little secrets is they're not science fiction shows. They are, and Doctor Who, they are actual framing devices for telling any kind of story you want this week. The original series of Star Trek, they'd go to a planet and maybe they would do, you know, uh, heroes fighting in the arena for the entertainment of Greek gods. And then the next week, they would do gangsters. And then the next week, they would do, and Lost was the same way. One week, they would do a guy who falls in love with a Korean gangster's daughter. And then the next week, it would be, this girl has daddy issues. And the next week, it would be this con man trying to stay one step ahead of the law. It was a framing device. And this system, Traveler, works exactly the same way. Now, we are, of course, we're leaning heavily into the economic system. It's such a wonderful, robust, and rich uh, vein to mine for solo games. Uh, but as we go on over the, the months and years, and we, we complete filling out this map, we will have our, our technocracy versus our religious nuts versus our mercenary core, right? We already have three factions. And one of the reasons I'm focusing on the wandering around the map is so that we can flesh this out. And then once we have drilled down to find out where those fault lines are, then we can start having some real like impact on the setting. 
I don't know if the the religious versus the technocrats down in Corvinus is going to be one of those yet. Like I said, let's finish the exploration. Let's kind of map out the major waterways before we start really getting into trading with the natives, if you will, to torture that that um, analogy to its illogical conclusion as we do. Back to the chat. The Expanse is really good. Uh, I've heard that. The canon map is a little overwhelming, but if you are in a pinch and you don't want to go over all the trouble, you can play there, I guess. The canon map, what you do is you put your finger down. You say, okay, here's our subsector, and then you blow this up, and you gain in that subsector. You don't worry about the rest of it for months on end. It's not until you've exhausted this or you've been run out of every single town on every single planet that you go to a new subsector. Uh, Firefly, Andromeda... Um, I, I don't have any experience with at Stargate. You, you guys would have to tell me if you think that would work. Uh, but fire the, the big TV shows are Firefly and Drama. Lost is a great example of, here's just a, gen, a general setup. It's a framing device. And then in the case of Lost, they said, we're just going to use flashbacks to show how, what all of these people's lives were like before and how they kind of interacted and intersected in some curious ways. Um, Mongoose 2, you can do setting agnostic. There's a little blurb at the beginning that talks about that. Uh, that's good to know. Uh, Ice Pirates is a classic. Have you read the Golden Age of Sail series? I have not by Nathan Lowell. They include quarter share, half share. Yeah, I've read, well, okay. I don't know what the Golden Age of Sail is. Uh, I have read a really good chunk of Dan O'Brien's work, and I've read a really good chunk of um, the Hornblower series which goes into that stuff as well. Uh, world building and traveler can go amazing. Yep, Stargate was another perfect framing device for telling any kind of story. Yeah, Stargate is Monster of the Week. Um, yeah, I, even something like, and, and I like, you know, we're doing Monster of the Week. I like the Monster of the Week. I don't think enough shows do that these days where you go to a town, and, and the, even in D&D, Monster of the Week is a perfectly acceptable way to run that. It has become, uh, unfortunately, there was a term called murder hobo, which has uh, drilled down a little bit. Like, it, the original murder hobo was, go to a town, who do they need murdered? Oh, the goblins this week. Okay, and then you go to the next town, and, and I'm a little tougher, so I can murder the orcs that are threatening the town, and I go to the next town. And that's a perfectly acceptable, that, that is a fine basis for a D&D campaign, right? Lone, uh, lone Wolf and Cub, going from town to town, righting wrongs, fighting injustice, the A-team, but with wizards, that's a great way to run a D&D campaign. A traveler campaign can work the exact same way. Uh, and like I said, Stargate, there's probably a Stargate RPG, I would think, right? The depth possible in this thing is always amazing. Just reading from the Pirates of Drynax books and all the planets, you get a thousand ideas. Yeah, today we find out why these people are sleeping. Yeah, you know, I'm a leaf on the wind. It's a shame Firefly got the axe so quickly. You say that, Bill Cedar Heath. I think it's a good thing, to be honest with you. I think it's very much uh, along the lines of Jim Morrison faking his death when he did. Or, you know, there are a lot of guys, or um, the, the Gen X discount version of Jim Morrison, uh, the lead singer from uh, Nevermind. No, Nevermind was the album. Uh Kurt Cobain, right? Like, can you imagine what Kurt Cobain would be like today? If Kurt Cobain had survived, he would not be the legend he is. You would look at him with the same amount, like the same bad taste in your mouth that Dave Grohl has. Whereas if Dave Grohl had died, I, you know what, to be honest with you, people probably wouldn't have mattered anyway. Um, it's a shame Firefly got the axe. I, I think the, the first season is great with the movie to cap it off. I think that's, that's perfect, and I don't have a problem with it. Firefly died young, so it couldn't grow bad with age. Eh? Dice Tales, yeah, the doors. Um, yeah, and, you know, that, well, we, we won't get too much into that. Uh, I, I think we're good, man. I think we, we, we had some good adventures today. We've expanded our reach. We have a long way to go. We've got easily two weeks before the calendar catches back up with our adventurers, which gives us plenty of time to detail Hanson, Youngden, Inolfna, Cedar Heath, Fraley, and the two... Oh, wait a minute. Two sisters we name later? No, I don't think so. I, I got commenters right here, right now, that are ready to go. Uh, so this is Semit. 
C E M M E T T. And who else? Uh, Caleb. I already kind of named something after you, right? The Warlord Caleb. Uh, is anybody else missing in there? Do, do I name one Tice Dales? Let's see. In a sense, Firefly could have potential second season to expand the characters' backgrounds. Oh, is this a session recap? I was just scrolling through the shorts. And this seemed interesting. No, Emmett, see, we are doing a live play. We did a jump. We, we did a miss jump, if you're familiar. We were at Tobor trying to get to Cyric, and we wound up in this system right here. The, that planet is called Tardmar. And then we fleshed it out a little bit, and then we checked our dice, we rolled it, we made it to Cyric, and we made bank. 75 grand, even after paying our subsidies, paying off our loans, we did really well. It was a good session for us today. And then we started checking the chat, and we had some thoughts on, uh, you know, we, we, we are lamenting the loss of James Ward, pour a 40 of Mountain Dew on the curb for one of the all-time greats. We, and then we talked a little bit about the differences between the editions of Traveler. And we just, man, we're just, we're just hanging, man. We are just, as the kids these days say, vibing. But I am going to try to get some rest and see if I can get back to 100% tomorrow. So next time, guys, I'm praying for you.